Hello, I'm Stephen Barrett. I'm going to talk to you today about the colour orange. Well, the colour orange is actually named after the citrus fruit, first cultivated in ancient China and then spreading to Central Asia, to North Africa and to Southern Europe. From the early 15th century onwards, delicious, perishable and very expensive oranges begin to appear in Northern European paintings as symbols of success and wealth. Jan van Eyck's celebrated Arnolfini portrait features several fruits displayed in a room stuffed full of other luxuries. Of course, where oranges were not an imported rarity in Spain, for example, they could serve as a reminder of the daily pleasures of food and mealtimes. Luis Melendez's still life from the late 18th century is a wonderful example. The carefully observed oranges nestled among other familiar foodstuffs on a humble pantry shelf. There are other names for the colour orange, of course. Saffron, for example, which is the colour of Buddhist monks' robes. And some things which are referred to as orange are in fact coloured red. Think of red hair, or the plumage of the robin redbreast, which is actually orange. Medieval manuscript illuminators used for their bright orange pigment something called minium. And the name for that derived from a mineral deposit that was found in the river Mino in northwestern Spain and Portugal. This page from the Tameth Hours, created in the early 15th century, shows the eye-catching effect of Minium as it highlights important passages in the text and draws attention to the details of the beautiful illustrations. Naturally occurring Minium was very rare and expensive, and so artists who used this colour generally produced their own. This was done by heating specially treated pieces of lead in an oven, stirring constantly with an iron rod until the lead turned a bright orange red. This colour then became known as red lead, and it's actually the most common orange pigment found in medieval and early Renaissance panel paintings. For example, the patterned carpet upon which these three saints stand here, the artist Nardo di Cione, working in the middle of the 14th century, has used red lead laid on top of gold leaf for the dazzling orange colour of the carpet, intensified through its proximity to ultramarine blue. Blue is the complementary opposite or pair to orange. By that I mean that it provides the maximum colour contrast with orange. And artists have used this potential to great effect in the history of painting. Titian's Bacchus Nariadne, painted in the 1520s, is a famous example of the vibrant juxtaposition of orange and blue. The painting depicts the first meeting between Bacchus, the Roman god of wine, and Ariadne, a Cretan princess abandoned by her lover Theseus on the island of Naxos. As Ariadne waves forlornly, desperately hoping that Theseus will return, Bacchus and his followers rush towards her, the young god leaping from his chariot to declare his love. Titian cleverly divides the composition between the top right and the bottom left corners, creating two triangles, the upper dominated by vivid ultramarine blue, and the lower by earth colours, yellows, browns and orange. It is as though these two triangles represent the realms of heaven and earth, colliding and creating a visual harmony that, that reflects the eventual coming together and love between Bacchus and Ariadne. The woman to the right of Bacchus even wears a costume composed entirely of the complementary pair. Her ultramarine skirt clashing but also harmonising with the vivid orange of her tunic. In this figure it seems that Titian highlights the central idea of his painting, colour contrast and harmony as the visual equivalent to the human emotions of surprise, alarm, excitement and ultimately love. As a Venetian painter of the 16th century, Titian was ideally placed to avail himself the full range of minerals and other substances that were used to create pigments. Venice was Europe's busiest and wealthiest port and the entry point into Europe for exotic and beautiful materials from the East. The orange pigment used in Bacchus and Ariadne is actually derived from Rialga, a mineral highly prized for its beautiful orange colour. 
but very rare and actually highly poisonous. It contains arsenic and so was really best avoided. Of course, Rialga and the similarly poisonous red lead weren't the only options available to painters because orange can be mixed from red and yellow. And this was certainly a common practice from the Renaissance, really up until the beginning of the 19th century, when advances in chemistry and the manufacture of paints revolutionised colour and art. New compounds of chromium and cadmium, often discovered by accident as the byproducts of industrial processes, made available to artists for the first time a reliable and standard range of brilliant orange pigments available in stable preparations. The new technology of paint manufacture and the availability of ready mix paints in collapsible metal tubes, easy to handle and, and easy to transport, helped to facilitate the emergence of the Impressionist movement in the late 19th century. Pierre-Auguste Renoir's The Skiff, painted around 1879, illustrates wonderfully the use of these intense modern colours, now cheap and relatively safe to use. The skiff or rowing boat in the painting is realised in a deep and rich chrome orange, its sleek form melting into a pattern of short horizontal brushstrokes Renoir uses to evoke the reflection on the water's surface. Chrome orange is used also for the sailboat seen further back on the river, the brickwork of the house and the railway bridge. Of course, Renoir understood the complementary relationship between orange and blue. This was now part of a colour theory expressed diagrammatically in the colour wheel children still learn today at school. Renoir's painting, pairing cobalt blue, another new colour, and chrome orange, creates a moment of intense beauty of maximum colour contrast, but also perfect harmony. Colour has great expressive potential, and orange is often said to connote hope, confidence and optimism. It can also evoke the sun-drenched and lost landscape of an idealised classical past. Frederick Layton's Flaming June from 1895 must be one of the most incredible uses of orange in a work of art. The delicate, translucent fabric of the woman's dress falls into a hundred tiny folds, each one carefully painted so that the light and shade pick out a seemingly infinite range of orange notes. The overall effect is of beauty, excitement, but also restful repose, the perfect, if wholly, unreal image. Orange, then, is a vital colour in the history of art. Always urgent and eye-catching, it's impossible to miss. In fact, it seems to jump out at us. It's no accident that bright orange is the colour of traffic cones and high visibility vests. From succulent fruit to warning signs, the sight of orange is certainly never dull.